Hello, and welcome to a new RPG example video. Today, I'm going to talk about improvements we get by using sub procedures instead of subroutines, and I'm going to do it showing you an example. Let's go. Well, I have created a simple program in RPG, and there I have a subroutine. As you see, I have declared two variables that are going to be used to make an error check, and three more variables that I'm going to use to send information to the subroutine. All are declared globally. As you see, I called to the uh, subroutine two times, one and two, and it checks for the result of A plus B, and if it is not C, it is returning an error. In the last two things I have said before, there are two things that are not true. In one hand, I cannot send information to a subroutine. I'm changing global variables, and after that, I'm using them into the subroutine. It is the only way I can communicate with the subroutine. In the other hand, the subroutine is not returning nothing. It makes some calculation all over global variables, so I'm checking what the global variables have to know the result of this calculation. Of course, if I compile and run the program, it will work perfectly. But there are things that can improve, clearly. The first thing I can do is converting this subroutine into a subprocedure. Very easy now with full free RPG because I only have to change the opcode begin subroutine and end subroutine for declare procedure and end procedure. Also, if I have any leaf subroutine inside it, I can replace it by a return. Let me change this and this. And as I don't have any lib subroutine, it is converted into a procedure. There are more things that I can do to improve it. As you should know, the subprocedure can have parameters and also they can return a value. And this value doesn't need to be an RPG type. It can be a known defined type. So for improving it, let me add the three variables, A, B, and C, as a param as parameters. And these parameters are going to be passed by value, not by reference, because I don't need to change the value of them. This is something that improves the security of the code. And also, this is something that is checked by the compiler in the compilation time. So I'm going to have a, an entry with three parameters. Um, the parameters are going to be a const b and c. Let me change this to. Also, I can declare no pass parameters and omit parameters. It is the same as if I have a sub program inside my program. Okay, now I can also change the sub procedure to return a value. In this case, I can return the error. But the error has two variables the code, that is an indicator, and uh, the text with the error. Well, let me declare a template globally. I'm going to declare error T is like error type as a qualified structure template. And it is going to have the code of type indicator and I initialize it and the text that is going to be a bar char of 50. Okay. And uh, well, as I have this uh, own type defined, the use it here in the procedure. Oh, let me change it to. 
So I can do this. Okay, and here I can declare error as a local variable of type error t. And I put this because this way I'm, uh, the structure is, is initialized every time the procedure is called. Okay, so I don't need it. And I can change it. I can change the select this way. Error dot code is going to be on, and error text is going to be this. And after that, I have to return the error because this is the uh, the value I have to return in the uh, sub procedure. Okay, uh, this is structure that I'm declaring here in the sub procedure can have the same name if I had different structure with the same name in the main procedure or in other different procedure. It doesn't matter. In fact, this is one of the benefits of using sub procedures. Well, let me change the main procedure. Uh, I'm going to have here. this because I'm, I need it to receive the uh, value from this uh, procedure. I don't need this anymore. And I can do this. Sec one, two, check errors, uh, five, three, eight, seven, sorry. Okay, and if error code is different than uh, on, then I can uh, send the error text to the uh, job log, okay? And in this case, I can do the same. Let me copy this. And in this case, I'm going to put here an eight and all the rest is completely the same. Okay, so let's uh, compile it and let's check how it works in the green screen. So let me change this. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the green. Okay, let me start a debug session. Uh, the program is uh, pro, pro PGM. Okay, let me stop it here and let's call the program. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is calling to the sub procedure. So let's enter into the sub procedure. And uh, well, I have A, B, and C on my parameters and I have error that is my um, return value that is initialized okay so as um, a plus b is not equals to c I'm uh, filling the error structure with this uh, all this stuff okay and it I'm returning it Okay, and in the main procedure, error code has this value, okay? So I'm displaying Yeah, I'm blinked, this is not, this is wrong, okay. Let me change this. Uh, error code is on then I'm sending the uh, text, the error text to the uh, job log, okay? 
What happens if I call it again with 5, 3, and 8? Well, in this case, I'm not going to enter into the sub, uh, sub procedure in this case. I'm returning, I'm returning this. So I have not, uh, I have no error and I'm not sending the uh, error text to the uh, job log. So, so I just convert the subroutine into a sub procedure in a very easy way. And this way I can get all the improvements that a sub procedure gives to me instead of a subroutine. In fact, a subroutine is like an old go do, and the sub procedure is something more complex. It's like a little program, as I said before. I to say that we also can declare subroutines inside sub procedure. I don't recommend it, but you can do it. Also, there is something that I cannot do with a sub procedure, and this is ending a program. For that, I recommend to return a value in all that sub procedures that can end the program. So when the value arrives to the main procedure, you can call them to a subroutine that can end the program. The IBM documentation says that if you are not using the improvements of a sub procedure, then you should use a subroutine. I'm not agree with this affirmation. I think subroutines are something that belongs to the best. And the day we decide to use sub procedures, we should you only use them. Of course, of course, there are more benefits using sub procedures than using subroutines. I hope you like this video. Please, please leave your comments below. And please, thanks for watching.